Disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Do not self-experiment with unapproved research compounds. Welcome to Biohack Stack, where science fiction meets PubMed citations. And we explore the weird, the promising, and the questionably legal corners of human optimization. ACD-856 wasn't supposed to be exciting. It was meant to help people with Alzheimer's, not make Redditors start debating receptor pathways at 3 a.m. But here we are. What began as a humble cognitive drug from a small Swedish biotech called Alzacure Pharma has now entered the biohacker spotlight, where anything that even whispers BDNF gets treated like the second coming of neuroplasticity. So, what exactly is it? ACD-856 is a TRK receptor agonist, meaning it nudges the TRKB receptor, which is what BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, naturally binds to. If that sounds familiar, it's because nearly every antidepressant you've ever heard of eventually increases BDNF2, just indirectly, and after weeks of waiting. ACD-856 is trying to skip the middleman, Instead of gently persuading your serotonin system to maybe grow some neurons later, it just kicks the door down and says, let's do neurogenesis now. In preclinical models, that approach worked beautifully. Mice on ACD856 learned faster, remembered better, and acted noticeably less depressed. Assuming we can even tell what a depressed mouse looks like. It also appeared to increase synaptic plasticity, the brain's ability to rewire itself which in a field where most antidepressants have the excitement level of a beige wall, sounded like sci-fi come to life. Naturally, the internet took notice. Despite being a research compound with no published human safety data, some enterprising biohackers somehow got their hands on it. You can find posts where people claim they're testing it for cognitive enhancement, which usually means they ordered a small vial labeled for laboratory use only and proceeded to become the laboratory. One user says it felt like a mental fog lifted overnight. Another said they felt wired, anxious, and couldn't sleep for two days. So, mix your views, as usual. Mechanistically, it's a fascinating gamble. By activating TRKB directly, ACD856 may enhance the same intracellular pathways that drive neuronal growth and survival. In simpler terms, it tells your brain cells to stay alive, branch out, and make new connections. If that's true in humans, this could represent a new era of pro-plasticity drugs that boost cognition and mood at the same time. The dream is something that works as fast as ketamine, but without the dissociation and the talking to God part. Of course, there are caveats, several large ones. Nobody really knows what happens when you crank up TRKB signaling long-term. In theory, it could help depression, anxiety, and neurodegeneration. In practice, too much BDNF activity can backfire, potentially increasing anxiety or even triggering unwanted neural sprouting in weird places. It's like fertilizing your brain's garden. A great idea until the weeds start growing too. Then there's a practical issue. Sourcing. The compound isn't approved anywhere, and most of what's sold online is labeled not for human consumption. Prices can get ridiculous, and purity verification is basically the honor system. This is the gray market's version of self-funded R&D, except you're the R, the D, and the possible adverse event report. Yet despite the chaos, it's hard not to root for this one. The concept makes sense fix the underlying neuronal communication instead of endlessly tweaking neurotransmitter levels. In a future where depression treatment looks more like neurorehabilitation than chemical mood patching, drugs like ACD-856 could lead the way. Imagine antidepressants that help the brain heal itself rather than just mask symptoms. That's a real promise here, and it's worth keeping an eye on. Until then, the safest protocol is still the most boring one. Eat protein, lift heavy, sleep deep, and let your natural BDNF do its thing. ACD856 might someday make that process faster, 
but for now, it's still trapped in limbo. Somewhere between Alzheimer's research and Reddit self-experiments. If it makes a leap successfully, we might just get the first antidepressant that's not only fast acting, but genuinely restorative. And if it doesn't, well, at least it made depression sound interesting for once. If you enjoyed this dive into the frontier of brain hacking, hit that like button, subscribe for more molecules that shouldn't exist but somehow do, and let me know what compound you want us to explore next. Because in the end, we're all just trying to debug the most complex code ever written, the human brain.